Hello, Gavin here from Hologram Productions. And this video is part two of how to make music in the style of burial. Part one, we focused on how we could make those organic sounding drums and bass. And in this video, we're going to focus on how we can gather samples from multiple different sources, put things together in order to create the atmosphere of Burial's music. Because a Burial, it's all about the atmosphere. So first things first, when designing our atmospheric sound palette, we're going to have to go ahead and gather some... Falling. The most distinctive aspect of his foley is his use of vinyl crackle. A lot of artists use this, but his is very up front. And he also chops up vinyl crackle from various different sources. The blue snippet is a really strong vinyl crackle strike, which he usually starts his tracks with. To make the atmosphere more murky, you need to throw in bad weather atmosphere, so rain, and thunder. Here's a nice rain sample I pulled from YouTube. And that multicolored audio line is a selection of different vinyl crackles taken from various different sources because they change a lot throughout his track. He tends to throw them in seemingly haphazardly, but to basically change up the atmosphere and make it sound organic. Notice the glue compressor with the low threshold and rolling off the super highs and putting a limiter right at the end. For some rumbling low end atmosphere, a thunder sound, again pulled from YouTube, with a hybrid reverb and mid side EQ to roll off the stereo on the lows, and some glue. For the bass sound, I pulled from the soundtrack The Crow, one of my favourite soundtracks. But I'm not going to use the whole of the sound, I'm just going to use the lows. At this point, I feel we're going to have to add some. I'm going to use the Roland Juno 106. I should find a sample, but I have no idea what sample he used in order to get the four chords I'm about to create, so I thought I'd create them from scratch and manipulate the sounds. It's a four chord minor descending motif, which comes from the track McDonald's and a lot of his tracks, to be honest. That sounds shit, so the key is to roll off the highs, make sure you put heavy compression, you can see that the needle is working very hard to compress it, a lot of reverb, and then you glue the reverb again, and then roll off most of the lows and some of the mids. Just a little bit of music theory, this modulates between minor chords and major chords and they descend and they're three note chords and this is the thing which gives the music a sense of emotion and pain almost, which is key to his music. So the chords and the foley together sound like this. So to add to the atmosphere, we're gonna to have to continue to pull more sounds from various different random soundtracks. Oh, stuff from soundtracks my the first snippet we're gonna use, which is something that Beryl used, is a track called Saju by Jin Ling. Or is it Jin Ling by Saju? Frankly, I have no idea what that, I mean, what is this? Is it a game, a film? Who cares? Drum bus muffled crunch and E gives it a really lovely muffled sound and then make sure that you're adding a lot more atmosphere using Galactic Coral Hall which is a hybrid reverb which just washes it right out and then any EQ spikes push them down. The intro track from the Flatliner soundtrack is something also used and it works fabulously with the Jin Ling Saju sound. Again, Galactic Coral Hall reverb and lots of glue both left and right of the all whatever just just glue it lots of glue be grand. Yep, good stuff. So yeah, now let's move on to a clip from a film. He uses a lot of clips from the film Bullet Boy. You know I can't. He didn't use this exact clip, but uh, sod it. I'm going to use it because it sounds cool. This is Meryl reloading her gun from Metal Gear Solid. If we're going to go to the north, we'll have to I am with a bra. It wouldn't be buried if we didn't use sounds from Metal Gear Solid. I also decided to use a spray can shaking sound. I think he used this in one of his tracks. Uh, transpose it down slightly, add a little bit of vibrato on the course. Again, glue the hell out of it and reverb the hell out of it. Oh yeah, and DS the hell out of it. Sounds cool. Eyes when your heart 
<laughs> Speaking of McDonald's, this is the acapella he used. Once upon a time, it was you I adored. Sounds shit, so you do have to fix it a lot. Um, I had to transpose it down one semitone in the first half, and then it goes up. It sounds better. Cause at once upon a time, it was you I adored. Sounds cool. Lots of glue, EQing off the lows, and reverb like hell. I do appreciate that a lot of people have been making a lot of requests in the comments, and it is my intention to get around to all of them. Bearing in mind, I work at a certain speed, and it might take a while to get to them. However, I will get to as many as I can. But if you really like the channel, and you want to offer your support, because I am going to need it, then feel free to contact me for one-on-one -on -one tuition, because whenever these things happen, it does help me to keep the business afloat and growing, which I intend to grow it. Uh, as far as it can possibly go. I'm going to be here for some time. So any support would be much appreciated, whether it be purchasing samples or every now and then purchasing a one-on-one -on -one tutorial. I guarantee you, no matter how good you are at production, you will learn something from my bespoke tutorials. Nice one. Wow, I felt like I was sinking into a black hole there. It was so goddamn atmospheric. Okay, so pretty happy with that. Uh, when I get to part three, we're going to combine the drums and the bass with all the Atmos in order to make a burial sounding track. So thanks for your support, and don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.